money. Every game needs money. And so do big publishers. And when you mix both things to develop monetization strategies, you get amazing games. Marvel Avengers has found a new strategy to squeeze every cent possible from unaware gamers. They have discovered a new meta, and do they know their stuff? They did it at the best time and with the best setup possible. Even after promising that they wouldn't have paid to win scenarios. But the internet is smart to catch up with predatory tactics. They react when you attack their wallets. Or at least they spread the word. We have seen this happen over and over. When companies have used monetization, even more, and no one complains about it, it starts an ugly pattern. And when they do complain, when they spread the word, things like the Battlefront 2 scandal happen. $60 for a game and you still have to play 40 to 60 hours to unlock each hero and then go through loot boxes to get upgrades. But we have to thank them for that, because not only did we get one of the funniest PR responses and also the most downvoted comment in Reddit history by far, which says, the intent is to provide players with a sense of pride and accomplishment for unlocking different heroes. Can't you believe it? But not long after that, regulation versus loot boxes started to appear on different countries. So when a community organizes to spread the word and vote with their wallets, things do change. And when they do not, companies make patents to abuse the matchmaking to incentivize you to buy. Yes, patents like this are out there and you have probably played games from this company, but I can tell you who they are. Marvel Avengers was a very expensive game to make. We don't know the exact data, but it was around 100 million at least, and it involved different studios. However, it wasn't doing so well not even close to making profit, and no one was playing it, so something had to be done. And wait, because they had a brilliant idea, the almost perfect strategy. They were going to improve the game. They are actually releasing resource and XP boosters in a single player game, at full price. But what is brilliant is not what they have done, but the amazing setup. They had figured all out back in March. They nerfed the speed at which players could level up, and you know where this could lead and so did the community. This brought a lot of speculation around the topic and had people arguing if this was a setup for future XP posters. And they weren't wrong after all. However, they were smart, sneaky if you want to think so. They did not implement it right away when the water is boiling and the mob is out for blood. They patiently waited for these ideas to die down, for people to forget about it, and then they put a cherry on top. If there are no players, increasing the monetization wouldn't have solved anything at all. But there is a way to change this nowadays. It is a Marvel game after all, so if you reduce the barrier of entry, reducing the price, many people will at least try it out. And there is a platform perfect for doing this, without going free to play, the Game Pass, where you can play mini games for a low cost. This was a success, the game became one of the most popular games on the Game Pass. And how does a big company celebrate? By taking advantage of the situation and releasing XP and Resource Masters about one week after. Or genius. Do you imagine Breath of the Wild or The Witcher releasing XP boosters? I guess they are only needed when your game is so bad that people will pay to not play it. So the question is, do you think that the community will make them backtrack and remove it, like Shadows of War did? Personally, I would be very careful purchasing any games from this publisher from now on. Thank you for watching, stay tuned for more news and upcoming games, and have a nice day.